What's poppin' guys? You got your coach of the Chim Chargers for our GBA Finals match versus Chimpack. Coach of the Philadelphia Scissors in what is to be the Chimp V Finals everybody's been waiting for for the longest time. Hopefully it lives up to your expectations of being a solid, great match overall. And so Chimpack brings a team of Yuxi, Scrafty, Tapu Bulu, Victini, Nihilego, and his Greninja, which is a Torrent, Torrent Greninja. We of course bring the squad from the building video from yesterday, so check that out if you want to know the sets that I'm bringing. You already know the drill, link in the description below as always. At a first glance, upon team preview I, I was immediately trying to anticipate what sets he might bring. So for the Yuxi, I was thinking it's probably going to be Colbert Berry so that it can take Hoopa on Bounds attack once uh, really well with like Stealth Rocks, um, U-Turn of course, maybe Psychic for like Amoongus and stuff, and um, either T-Wave or, uh, or like, um, I don't know, Foul Play or something that can do a lot of damage to physical attackers that I have. Something like that, perhaps. For the Scrafty, I'm thinking, okay, this could be a bulky, maybe intimidate Scrafty with, like, Choppel Berry, so that it can take hits better from my Hoopa Unbound, like, Drain Punch or Focus Blast, or even Focus Blast from Raichu, for that matter, and be a good check to those kinds of Pokemon. Um, for the Bulu, um, I was definitely anticipating either a Cobo Berry SD set, or maybe, like, a Bandit set or something, or... Um, one of those two, I, I would think more likely the Koba Berry because that could take a quick attack from uh, Pinsir, even a return perhaps. So having to uh, worry about that is something that was in the back of my mind. Um, Victini, I'm thinking could either be, um, it, it could be Scarf perhaps. I'm thinking more like uh, E-Belt, like, uh, like a sort of mixed attacking set or maybe an E-Belt, like Blue Flare, Thunder, Glaciate with U-Turn to deal damage to Hoopon Bound. Uh, the Nihilego could be Scarfed most likely so that he will be able to outrun my Pinsir. It would make more, most sense if that was the case because otherwise Pinsir would just outrun it. And uh, Greninja is um, is what I'm thinking to be like a Z-Move user with ICMZ because I know that while I was testing a little bit, um, some of the sets brought versus me were ICMZ Greninja for like Amoongus. So um, I anticipate spike stacking and hazard stacking for sure. I think that he's going to try to pressure me with hazards. So Defog is definitely a priority in this match to keep away hazards from my side to protect my Pokemon and potential leads. So I'm thinking he'll either lead off with the Uxi or with the Nihilego, not Nihilego, sorry, the uh, Victini or even the Greninja for that matter to try to get up some early spikes in the game. But Uxi seems more probable because it's bulky, has potential for rocks and U-turn. So I figured my best lead was going to be Tapu Koko. The reason is because it's faster than literally everything on his team and um, it can go for a nice U-turn to scout out turn one try to pressure him uh, early on, maybe like uh, if he wants to lead with something like Yuxi or some other Pokemon, maybe I can sort of, like, I guess, scare him with a, like a taunt, even though I don't have taunt and just U-turn out into something. So let's go ahead and see what goes down in this match. And um, let's get right into it. The Chimp V Finals, Finals of the GBA Season 8. Here we go. Let's get right into it. And um, of course, Chimpact is going to be challenging me. He is the GOAT, as they call him. May or may not be his first mistake. We will find out here. And he leads off with the Uxie as I do lead off with my Tapu Koko. Of course, getting up the electric terrain. So this is a pretty nice lead here for me. I can easily go for the U-turn as he does hard switch out, probably anticipating a taunt or something. Not wanting to get taunted here if he wants to go for rocks or something. So he does go into Bulu. I go for the U-turn and I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is the time where I find out what how how this Bulu set is um is is I guess constructed. Because I go into my pincer, I want to double here because I want to find out if he wants to stay in. And if he stays in, it's very likely that he's either Koba Berry or Choice Scarf. So he goes for the Rock Tomb here. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, this, I mean, it could be, it could be Choice Scarf potentially, but it also could be Koba Berry. And I'm sort of leaning more towards Koba Berry here. So I'm going to be switching out, or he's going to be switching out firstly into his Scrafty. I'm actually going to double here into my, um, into my Hoopa Unbound. As you can see, he is Intimidate Scrafty. So he's probably a bulkier set. I'm going to go into my Hoopa Unbound, anticipating him to, um, to switch out here and he actually switches out again uh, into his uh, into his Uxie as I go for the Drain Punch. Maybe he doesn't want to pop his barrier. Maybe he just is feeling safe to go into Uxie because it does indeed pack a Colbert Berry. From the way he brought it in, it has to have Colbert Berry. So I'm going to switch out here into my Gligar anticipating either a Rocks or a U-Turn. As he does go for the U-Turn, I can sponge that really well. And I'm uh, curious to find out what he wants to go into on this thing. And he brings out his Greninja. So I'm like, okay, this thing probably for a fact has ice coverage. So I will want to switch out here. And I decide that I'm going to go into my Slowbro. Reason is because I am AV. So I can take literally any hit from this Greninja, even Dark Pulse. 
And I, don't, I didn't want to go on Moongus right away, just in case he wanted to go for Ice Beam. So he went. He goes for the U-turn here. So the damage uh, dealt to the Slowbro leads me to believe that he's probably has some investment in uh, physical attack. So he goes into Bulu as I decided just to go for the Scald. Scald was a no drawback play because I can actually potentially get a burn on something. Um, unfortunately, 30% chance does not activate here and um, he's not going to be taking much damage at all. I am of course going to be forced out. He actually doubles out here into his Greninja. So he's, he's playing pretty aggressively with the doubles. Um, I'm just going into safe switch-ins because my team is more defensive. Um, it's, a, it's a more defensive team, I guess. So I'm going to go into Amoongus, which um, it still works out for me because the Greninja switch-in uh, here, he'll, I mean, he'll be forced out, so he's going to go for the U-turn uh, in fear of the uh, Giga Drain. As he goes into his Scrafty, I just go uh, right for the Giga Drain here just to kind of gauge the damage of what he wants to go into and I guess kind of see what his switching is. And uh, there's a little bit to Scrafty, decent amount of Scrafty, he's very bulky. Um, I still don't know what his item is yet. So here I don't want to get my AV knocked off on Amoongus because that thing is important to deal with Nihilego. So I go to, into my Pinsir anticipating the knockoff because I can take it really well. Uh, he goes for a Super Fang, so I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for me to just blow something back with a, um, a stab area late return. So I am going to Mega Evolve here. And um, this was my first mistake. <laughs> this was my first mistake here. He is Koba Berry on his uh, Scrafty. So that kind of caught me off guard. I was really thinking he'd be like Choppel Berry for, um, for like Hoopa as well as uh, Raichu. But unfortunately, I think he was more worried about Pinsir. So Pinsir went down here, which, um, which is really bad for me. So I'm, I'm going to go to Hoopa now. And um, I don't know how much he needs his Scrafty now at this point. So I'm just going to go for the Drain Punch because I figured that he wouldn't really need Scrafty for much else on my team, I guess, other than knocking off. But he just goes right into his uh, Uxie. Yeah, maybe I should have hyperspaced here, but I didn't think it was worth the play in case he wanted to stay in. Then I'd just lose my Hoopa. So I decide that I'm going to hyperspace now, just so that I don't get trapped in his momentum vortex with U-turn and everything. And I do pack a Tanga Berry so that I will be able to live a uh, U-turn from something like Uxie, for instance. And I'm going to be eating up my Berry here as he does go right for that U-turn into... Um, so I, I, I'll be eating that up. And he switches out here into his Greninja. So I don't want to stay in now. Like at, at this point, I know I have to switch out because I don't want to lose Hoopa. I'm going to go here into my Amoongus as he goes right for um, the Ice Punch. Uh, I'm going to take Spike's damage. He goes for the Ice Punch. So he's a physical Greninja. And I, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, he's going to go for a Z-move here. Like I definitely want to just bait this thing and make it go for, make it go for a Z-move thinking that I'll stay in. And, um, and he does just that. So he's going to go for a Z-move here. I was smiling at this point because I was like, yeah, this thing is definitely ICMZ. So we got him here. We got him here. Uh, he went for a Z-move, Sub-Zero Slammer. It's going to be going with the Ice Punch. And um, Slowbro will be able to eat this up. As you can see, it literally does like <laughs> it literally does like two damage. So that, that's clean. Very clean. And um, he goes for a spike here as I just decide to go right for the Scald. No drawback because the only thing that Greninja can do versus uh, Slowbro is U-Turn. It likely does not have Dark Pulse. It could have Night Slash maybe, but I mean, either way, it won't be doing much at all. It's Torn, Greninja, not Protean or anything, so I kind of wish it was Protean because then Scald would just knock it out there with uh, changing into a ground type, but I go for another Scald here, and I do actually get the burn this time. Uh, the burn does not matter on this thing, as you'll soon see, because his true intentions will be revealed. I decided to switch out here to regenerate my health and hope, hope, hoping that he goes for like a Stealth Rock so that I can try to get off a Defog here, as he does go for the Rocks. And um, now I'm like, okay, I, this is clean because I can I can get a defog off, and that's uh, that's where I was wrong. He goes for the memento, and he's actually faster than my Gligar, which I'm I was pretty surprised about because I was thinking he'd have psychic, and uh, with U-turn and like something like foul play or T-wave or something, he'd want to run like, relaxed nature to be uh, slower. But um, he was actually bold with uh, with a bit of speed investment in it. So he goes into Victini, and um, now I'm like, okay, if he mementoed and went into Victini and went for flame charge. He's probably running a, a weakness policy set. Like, it, it has to be a weakness policy. So, I just decided to go for the defog here. I did not want to activate weakness policy on this thing by going for an attack, especially since it's going to be doing pitiful damage, anyways. So, I'm going to go into Slowbro, which um, Slowbro can two hit KO Victini with his Scald. So, that's going to be great for me. As he goes for a Searing Shot and burns me with a 30% chance, which is annoying because I kind of wish my burn would give a. Oh, my Scald would have given a burn. <laughs> but um, he goes for another Flame Charge. Which is his best play overall, so that he'll be faster than any potential Scarfer that I have. So that was a really good play on his part. I go for the Scald, activate his weakness policy. And at this point, like I definitely want to regenerate my Slowbro. My Slowbro is my best way of beating this Victini. Or I guess is my only way of beating this Victini. Because I need to uh, go into Gligar on anticipating the uh, 
the electric move. Yet, and he has T-Bolt, so T-Bolt kind of relieves me a little bit, knowing that I can live with my Slowbro. I do live with Gligar, and I get another burn here, so he's getting every single burn with that, uh, with that, um, Searing Shot. It doesn't matter, I was gonna sack Gligar anyways, but, like, yeah, that's RNG for you right there. Two burns in a row, 30% chance. Um, I'm gonna go here into my Slowbro, knowing that I can tank this T-Bolt, as he goes right for that T-Bolt. And um, he is, of course, going to be able to knock me, or not knock me out, I can live. I'll be able to knock him out. So we were able to deal with that Victini really well, despite it being like the biggest threat to our team. I think we handled that extremely well. And um, now he's going to be going into Nihiligo. I don't want to give him a beast boost, so I am going to regenerate here. It's looking really clean for Amoongus, because Amoongus, now that Victini is gone, as well as um, Yuxi, Amoongus is looking really, really clean now. So I go into Amoongus here, and, and I, I just decide that I'm going to go right for the Stomping Tantrum. Um, should he want to stay in again, which he does not. He goes into his Bulu. Um, I could have clear smogged and predicted that, but like, like I said, since I have a more defensive team, like I shouldn't be playing aggressive with a defensive team. Um, also, Wi-Fi battle for some reason just makes me want to hit more of what's in front of me than like, say for instance, Showdown, which actually like I make more plays on because I can see everything better. Um, but yeah, I just go for a clear smog here. He's le he's literally just letting me damage his team right now. But um, but now like. At this point, I can go for a Giga Drain um, on the Greninja as he goes for a U-turn. So I guess he's sort of chipping away at my Amoongus, but I'm still recovering with um, with grassy terrain and stuff. So it's still it's still pretty nice so far. Um, so he's gonna go into his Scrafty here as I go right for the uh, Giga Drain. Not enough to knock it out though. Um, I do believe this was a roll. Uh, the first one did a lot more, so I think I could have potentially been able to knock it out here. I could have potentially been able to knock it out. So that's really unfortunate that. Um, that we're not getting fortunate. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Um, so he's gonna go for the knockoff here. I decided to go into slow bro because I don't want a movie's getting knocked off. It's important, very vital to keep my AV, and I did not want my Coco getting knocked off because it has a choice scarf and the only thing that can outrun his uh, scarf in the Hilego, which I do think it is. So I'm gonna go into my uh, into my Coco here as he goes back into his Bulu. I go right for the U-turn and. Um, this is kind of where I make my uh, my second misplay. So the first one, of course, you know, being Pinsir, I did not anticipate Cobra Berry. I don't know if you call it a misplay, but um, but I go into Amoongus here. Like, I I think I, I should have gone here into uh, Hoopa Unbound because this is where he reveals that he's not Choice Scarf. This is um, a light screen uh, type of Bulu with, um, with like three attacks. So I should have definitely gone Hoopa here because that would have pressured him offensively. Um, but I went into Amoongus because I think I was getting pressured by the timer and um, because the timer was getting really low and stuff with uh with the match and things like that and just i don't know like the whole like it, it was it was a lot of pressure in the um in the heat of the moment so i uh, i ended up going into amoongus here which i i think i should have gone into a into hoop unbound uh but now i basically i went for giga drain anticipating the uh, scrafty to come back in so that he'll get a free knockoff but um but yeah so like the clear smog is literally doing nothing behind when blue's behind the light screen so he he brought the tech he like he definitely brought the tech here to deal with um to take his from amoongus so he's gonna go with the Zen Headbutt here as I go for another clear smog. Really not doing much damage at all, but I still am trying to wear this thing down so that it'll be in range of um, of Coco to pick it off with Brave Bird, even if it has a Koba Berry. So now I decide that I'm gonna switch out here into my Hoopa, anticipating him to go for another Zen Headbutt. But he makes a nice, phenomenal, phenomenal play. Goes right for the Horn Leech on my Hoopa Unbound switch in uh, as I try to regenerate my uh, Amoongus. So great play on his part. I did lose my Hoopa, and um, I definitely should have played Hoopa a lot better in this match. So I'm going to go to Coco here as I can threaten this Bulu. Um, I decide here that I'm going to go for the U-turn back into Amoongus so I can chip this thing down. I get rid of the terrain so that he does not get any health back. So um, he goes into his Scrafty, which uh, does get off the Intimidate, and it's still able to live. Like, if that Giga Drain did, um, if it did more, like, if I didn't get the low roll on the Giga Drain, I feel like that the U-turn should definitely would have knocked it out, or that Giga Drain from Amoongus would have knocked it out. Um, either way, that Scrafty is being super annoying right now, so I am going to go Amoongus double back to Coco because I cannot get um, Amoongus knocked off because then uh, Nihilego has a field day. So I'm going to go back into Coco here as uh, he goes for the Super Fang, then switches out into his Greninja. I go right for the Brave Bird to um, to be able to knock out this Greninja, which is really nice. So I don't have to worry about uh, Ice Punch damage from Greninja on Amoongus or anything, followed up by another attack. He's going to be going into his uh, Nihilego now as what I can do is go into my Amoongus right here, which is uh, pretty nice. I can uh, sponge this Psy Shock, which he actually does pack. Um, luckily, it is not a 2 hit KO. It is a 3 hit KO. Here, I should have probably doubled back into Coco, expecting him to switch out into Scrafty, but um, I wanted something gone right now. I wanted something gone, and um, 
this crafty is gone here but uh, unfortunately like the only problem is right now the Scrafty has intimidated me, he can go back into his uh, Nihiligo and live the Stomping Tantrum that I go for. Um, so he goes for the Side Shock here, it's not going to be enough to knock me out. I will be able to live it. Um, I am, of course, EV to always live two Side Shocks from Scarf Nihiligo. And um, I can go for the Stomping Tantrum. It does th it does indeed, though, put him in range of uh, a Brave Bird, potentially. Like, if I get a low roll on the Brave Bird, um, he will be able to live at the current uh, range of HP that he's at. Like, I don't know the exact numbers because I couldn't really, can't really tell on Wi-Fi what their HP is or do like precise calcs as you can do on Showdown. But I go for the Brave Bird here um, and I do actually get a low roll, sadly. And um, he'll be knocking us out here with the uh, with the Psy Shock. And I'm, of course, you know, if he was Koba Berry on Bulu, which he was, the only way I could have won that is by critting the Bulu and knocking it out. So that is gonna be GG. And um, good game to my man Chimpact, of course. He played really, really well. Congratulations for winning GBA Season 8, my friend. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sad that we lost this. Like, I really wanted to win, especially after last season when I feel like we should have won that. And um, now, uh, you know, having lost this again, like, it's... I, I feel like we're cursed or something. Like, we, we gotta be cursed or something. Like, we... Uh, so basically, right, what? We, we won... We won uh, NPL Season 2, or I won NPL Season 2 Miners before uh, getting recruited into the GBA. And then once I got recruited, right, uh, Season 6, I mean, we got semifinals. But after that, Season 7, uh, Finals we lost. Then um, Multi-Battle League Finals for Season 2, we lost that uh, when uh, it was me and Joey. And then Season 8 Finals we lost. So we lost three back-to-back -back Finals. I really wanted to win, but um, but uh, it, it's all good. Like I, I feel like Chimpact played extremely extremely well in this match he, he really played well overall even though he got like he had more fortune in this match than i did in terms of uh, how things went um, things didn't really go my way too much in this match uh, i think he brought the right things in order to uh to win like his team was so much better in terms of prep than mine because as you can see my pincer should have done really well but everything that it could have done well against he brought cobalt berries and he brought like all sorts of berries that could um, take my attacks and stuff so at the end of the day, Pinsir really could not have um, could not have done much unless I like got rid of, unless I like did not stay in on his Cobra Berry. But then Pinsir would not have done anything until the end, and I don't know. I, I, it was just difficult to anticipate something like that. But um, overall, great game. Uh, I think we played really well, apart from the couple misplays that I said that we did. Um, of course, uh, risking Pinsir too early when I did not know what item it was. But I was in my mind, I was thinking it was Chopple Berry, and um, I guess I kind of had a good reason for that in my mind. But it was indeed double Cobra Berry. That he brought so his prep was on point for sure um i know i know some people like I, i've read in the comments somewhere like on some other people's channels that people say that i only make excuses with like matchup and stuff but it's true like chimpak did definitely had the better matchup for this um for the team that he brought i mean uh, is what i'm trying to say for the team that he brought like i feel like like while i was playing this match i was like dang if only i brought x set or y set um that would have been uh that would have been so much better but yeah i feel like Overall, I feel like playoffs should be like best of three, or at least finals should be best of three, but I don't know. Like, I feel like one match doesn't really determine much, but I don't make the rules or anything. Either way, this was like a really, really solid game. And um, yeah, I was like rushing towards the end too because the timer had already gone down below 10 minutes. So I was getting like a little nervous and stuff because the timer was just ticking down. But I mean, at the end of the game, Chimpak said he, did, he didn't want to win by timer or anything. So we were both kind of speeding up towards the end. But um, but it, it, it was just like such a, such a tiring match overall. Like it was... It was really like such a slow match, I feel, because um, it, it literally lasted like almost an entire, uh, the entire time of the uh, the timer. So yeah, really, a really solid game though. I think I, for a Chimfy finals, it uh, it definitely, uh, I hope it definitely met your expectation for it. I think it was such a great match overall. Like, and we made some really great plays too. Like we uh, scouted him out really well um, with the, uh, not only with the Z move, but like with also with the pincer uh, against the Bulu, we scouted that. We scouted out the Z move and he uh, burned it up on the slow bro. We played around his weakness policy of Iktini really well. Um, you know, having dealt with that, like he, we, we only lost the Gligar, but we didn't really need it at that point anyways because we got rid of hazards. So, I, I mean, there were some really good places um, that we played really well in. But I think just because of how long this match was, even like one slip up that we had cost or put us in the back by a lot. But um, but that's that's I guess that's what we learned from uh, in this match here. But overall, I mean, it was a solid game, I feel. And um, I, I think that if I if I played him again, like, I definitely would win for sure since I know what his things are. But that's what but that's what it's about. That's why I think it's, it was just the prep that he brought that made him win. Um, 
because I think we could have outplayed it if we if I knew what sets he was, uh, I could have definitely made I had a better judgment. But that's that's what draft league is like. I have to uh, sort of go off based off of uh, what I was thinking in my mind that he'd be. Um, but overall, yeah, uh, we had a solid run overall. I'm, I'm still kind of sad that we lost, but that is uh, the game that we play. We had the best win record overall in season six, seven, and eight of the GBA. So I guess that's something that we can be uh, we can be happy about. I guess. Um, overall, I'm just really happy that we got a chance to uh, have a great run and show off all our uh, all our cool sets that we had this season. I, I, like this season, I was I was kind of trying more hard than last season to win. Like I really wanted this win. I'm sure many of you guys noticed that I was trying a lot harder this time to actually like bring stuff that would like give me wins and things like that. And I, I think we did really well in that sense. But um, but yeah, I, I think overall, like we 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 still had a good run even though we lost this game. And I'm hoping that we can break the uh, break the final streak and actually win for next season. Like I was I was tempted to um to like leave the season if I won, but uh, no, I can't leave now because we gotta we gotta still win for uh, for season nine now. Uh, I do have to say that um, Chimpak is leaving after uh, this season, so um, I think this is it's a good send off for Chimpak. I think if anyone were to win uh, GBA, uh, Chimpak definitely does deserve it because um, because uh, think about it, right? He he lost season six quarterfinals from hacks. He lost season seven quarterfinals from hacks. He never even made it past the first round of playoffs until this season. Um, and he had a more fortunate run this season. So I think if anything, a great send off gift is for him to have the title for this season. So um, just you know, you know, Chimpak, take your win, buddy. You you earned it. But never forget, my friend. I got I got the most tour wins. I got the most esteemed tour wins here. Let, let, let me let me let me post some screenshots real quick. Hey, hey, take a look at this. See, I got the three trophies on the esteemed Pokemon Online Simulator server. Not, not bad. We got the Hispanic Premier League uh, Cup that I won here. And uh, we also got these nice forum tours. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll jokes aside, of course, though. He, like, I, I, feel like, I feel like both of us played really well. It just came down to prep. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And um, that's going to be it from me. Um, what you all have to look forward to in the future. We have Multi-Battle League uh, Season three coming soon soonish i think hopefully um that's gonna be coming up soon me and joey are a team of course in that um also uh another league that i am in i'm not gonna be saying what it is i'm not allowed to announce it yet but just know that i'm gonna be another singles league starting relatively soon um so until next season of gba you'll be able to see uh no i guess i, I guess a kind of more relaxed chill league but it'll still be really fun um so I, i'm not gonna say more on that you'll have to wait and see uh, I'll give some shout outs now, of course. Shout out to my boy Common Dude, of course. Big, big shout out to him. He really helped me out a lot in terms of uh, uh, in terms of like getting me the like the really nice quality upload battles and stuff so that I can uh, record over on like the Citra quality. Provided a lot of great uh, solid support for that. Um, of course, to my the people that helped me test, I got Gym Leader Geo, Gold Azu. Um, Joey helped me out a bit as well throughout the season and um, Void did help me to uh, I guess like towards a little bit towards the end uh, He helped uh, he was really busy. He couldn't really be much a part of the season like he was last season But um, yeah, a shout out to all you guys and of course huge shout out to all the people watching me and supporting me and everything like that, hey, that, that was, That's really that's really like what makes me feel like the winner because I I had all you guys supporting me throughout the season I, I still apologize for uh, not coming through uh, at the end here I know a lot of you were like, uh, were um, hoping that I uh, that I can win this game, but uh, you know things happen like this, and uh, I just I just am glad that I still have your support. Chimpak may have won the GBA, but I won the hearts of the GBA. Just remember that, all right? Just remember that. We got we all we all are in this together. All are in this together. But um, yeah, that's, that's gonna be it for me. I, at this point, like I'm I'm just sort of talking because it's like I don't know if I want to make our GBA recap. Tell me if I should. Like, should I make a GBA recap video or something and talk about the season and stuff? Because I think we did really well overall. Um, I don't know. Up to you guys. But um, other than that, that's gonna be it from me. I will uh, be getting up more uh, short on lives as well. Uh, so be uh, ready for those. If you guys are missing them, you know they'll be back. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Like I think. Uh, overall, I think that uh, you know, I think next season we'll we'll just draft stronger. We'll bring um, more heat, more fun stuff, and uh, that's it. So I will see you guys on the next video, whenever it is, whatever it is, and looking forward to hearing from you all. And I'll see you guys. Congratulations once again to Chimpact. Congratulations, my friend. Chimpy finals. 
this is it. And uh, this is your boy signing off. Peace.